Oh, I had a breath as usual. Uh, July 13th, 2020. Finally cutting that wood pile up. Try to get it cut, bucked up and then split into firewood. Made this saw buck yesterday out of two by sixes. The thing weighs a ton, but it's pretty sturdy. I needed to make something that was gonna be real sturdy because that, that saw has so much bite to it that it, it tosses things around a lot when you're trying to saw. You really gotta have something holding onto it. Uncle Dave from DC's Adventures. And I think it's about time we do a real review of this Katana Boy 650. I've cut quite a bit of wood up with it. I've got like a cord over there. And got this nice little saw buck. Strap the logs down because this katana boy has so much bite. But let me get the uh, tripod, get you guys set up, and we'll do some cutting with it. <clears throat> All right, good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to DC's Adventures. I'm Uncle Dave. Today, I want to talk about this saw. It's a Katana Boy 650. Um, I've had it since, I've had it for like seven or eight months now. And two months of that was winter and I wasn't using it that much but I was processing a little bit of like firewood just getting used to using it. It's um, Japanese steel, it's Japanese made and it is a Japanese pull saw, so it only cuts on the pull, it doesn't cut on the push. And it's really aggressive. It's really aggressive, but, but the cuts that it makes are super clean and super flush and almost finished looking. So it's pretty interesting. And I have been attempting to cut all of my firewood with this Katana Boy. A little help from this Baco bow saw and my Grand Forest Brook Scandinavian Forest Axe. And so far I have I have over two and a half cords down and I have about one and a half cords or one and three quarter cords of wood processed into split firewood. All done with this. Uh, I got this one from the Canadian Prepper and his website, CanadianPreparedness.com. We got a car going by. And so far it has performed really well. If you've been following the channel since uh, last fall, you'll know that I, I blew my chainsaw last, last fall making firewood for the past winter. And I had saved over the winter the $200 to go get that chainsaw fixed. Um, but it's sitting in the back of my SUV right now, still not fixed, because when I got the $200, um, I don't know, I, I was just, I was probably having a hard time with some sort of mechanical item, and I was like, screw fixing my chainsaw, it's just gonna break again. I'm gonna put this money towards this Katana Boy, because I've seen all these guys in Canada pretty much picking this as their backup saw. So, like, you know, when you live up here and you rely on firewood, it's the only way you're not going to freeze to death during the winter. You have to have a chainsaw you can trust, and then you also have to have a bow saw and, and possibly something like this. So if your chainsaw does break and you have to make firewood, you still have some way of cutting some wood up. Um, so I bought this hoping that it was going to be, not, not going to be a replacement for the chainsaw, but be the next best thing to a chainsaw. And it was between this and an old fashioned cross cut saw, but the cross cut saws um, are really expensive now if you want a good one that's in like really good shape where the metal isn't all messed up and, and the temper is still good. It, it, they're expensive and they're really hard to sharpen and you have to sharpen them often when you're cutting hard wood. Especially hard wood that has bark on it that has sand and dirt and everything in it. So I went with this to try this and I've been really pleased. It's a, it's a lot of hard work cutting all your wood by hand as you can imagine and it's taken me a long time but it is 
getting done at a reasonable pace and I only do like an hour or two, you know, three or four times a week and I am coming up with the amount of firewood I'm going to need to get through this winter. So I, I guess we'll take a couple cuts of this, uh, this is over six inches, this is a swamp maple or a white maple. Um, everybody calls it a swamp maple up here, but I have a lot of this on my property and this is good burning firewood. It burns pretty hot, not as hot as oak, but it, it burns pretty hot and it leaves a really white light ash, almost no ash at all. You could burn for like three days without emptying your ashtray. That's how light the ash is on this. Most of it blows right out through the chimney. So, and, and it doesn't have any like, yeah, it doesn't foul up the chimney at all either. So I really like this. This stuff is good stuff. And with a chainsaw, you can process this stuff up really fast and get a lot of good hard wood put away. Uh, with the Katana Boy, it's taking a little bit longer, but this thing definitely cuts through wood, like, way better than the bow saw. I mean, you would definitely never be able to process the wood you can process with this Katana Boy with uh, this bow saw, which is bow saw I love, and I've used this. I've used this to process wood at camp during the winter uh, when I wasn't spending the whole winter there, but you would never want to process four cords of wood with this thing. You could. If you're a real beast, people in Alaska, I'm sure, have done it. You backpack out into the woods and that's all you have, that's all you're going to use. But this Katana Boy really rips through stuff, so let's take a look at it. See if I'm not in the light. So you see this? It's kind of dirty. It's been cutting a lot of wood with it. Look at how sharp those teeth are and the teeth are like polished. And if you drop this, if you if you catch yourself on these teeth, they will cut you open real good. That guy from Atlas Shelter, he went to use, he went to do a review and test his katana boy out, and it slipped off a log, and he went to grab it, and that was a big mistake. Took a big chunk out of his hand. That guy has some awesome shelters. Right, there it is. I'll get you set up a little closer to this log, and let's get some cutting done. All right, we'll start with the thickest side doing like 12 to 14 inch pieces but this one we cut with the axe so we're going to cut it shorter so it's easier to split it so you get your first cut going do like shorter pulls and, and, and it cuts so quick and so easy like it's it's easy to make that first cuff care for whatever they call it the first cut and then as you're cutting, uh, the way that I would say it is you got to kind of play the violin with it. Like go up and back and up and back. And if you do that, you'll get through it a lot faster. You won't have as much drag. Whoop. switch sides halfway through <laughs> easier on my arms oh there we go Yeah, I'd say about six inches. Six inch hardwood. It's a little over a minute per cut. And I've been cutting all morning too, so when you're fresh, you can cut a little faster. And if you can breathe better than me, most people can, you can cut faster. But I'm gonna get to cutting some wood and I'll bring you back and show you some piles maybe. And, uh, yeah, maybe close this thing out at the end with some more thoughts on how practical this thing is. Starting to get some major wood processed with this Katana Boy. Almost finished with the second tier. 
shining in the sun. Look at that thing. Got this next log. I don't know. It's like more than six inches. And uh, we got to strap it down because this katana boy has so much bite that it'll spin the log while you're trying to cut it. So I just strap it down real tight with a strap and that kind of keeps that from happening. When you're working in the forest with it, you really can't um, cut like small, like small thinner things with it because it'll just spin and it's just not made for that. But larger stuff, like stuff this big, if it's on the ground and, and, and it has like friction from the ground touching the whole thing, then it won't spin. But when it's on my, when it's on my saw buck here, it'll spin in those four foot sections. So I just strap her down, but I got a lot of wood there. There's a whole cord behind the car over there. So definitely process a lot of wood. It's taken a lot of time, but I haven't really been doing more than a couple hours a day and I only do it like four days a week and I'm getting wood. There was like a month too where I didn't cut any wood when it was really hot. But yeah, it's only July, so I should be able to get the three and a half, four cords I need with this. And then I will have done all of my wood by hand. But I'm also going to order two cords at some point. Once I have a little extra cash here. And then they'll drop it off at the driveway all seasoned. And then I'll put that away. Plus throughout the winter I'll take the sled out. And the katana boy. And we'll cut some of the dry standing stuff I have around the property every winter. There's you know a couple trees I got to take down. Because they're going to fall down anyways. And I want to get the wood while it's dry and off the ground but yeah up at the cabin it's cutting wood katana boy 650 shout out to um nate over at um canadian prepper and canadian preparedness.com so that's where i got this thing from thanks man you were right this thing works great Man, so smooth. Not like a chainsaw, like super smooth. So, all in all, I would say I think this thing kicks ass. I really like it. And uh, any bushcrafter who packs into the woods a lot and cuts big firewood, like anybody who lives above the 46 parallel, this is a good one to have. It seems really long and kind of ridiculous. Like at first I wasn't sure if it was going to be as cool as everybody said it was. <laughs> but it, it really is pretty awesome. And it doesn't replace your chainsaw. If you're cutting firewood every year and you plan on doing it with this. Which you can get. Uh, this thing was $200 too. And you can get a blade for this between $65 and $100 depending on what's going on like right now because of coronavirus and all the crazy stuff that's going on um probably closer to 100 bucks and it might be sold out in most places but this this thing uh really can cut through a lot of wood and if you had your saw break down and you live in a place where you have to cut really big wood really this is the best option and, and it packs down even smaller than a cross cut saw you know once this is folded Oh, we didn't talk about this. It has like a locking mechanism here too. So I don't even have it locked right now. But you twist it all the way down. It makes it so it won't open on its own. I've noticed um, as I've been using it, this bolt tightens. So instead of getting loose, it, it doesn't get loose on itself. So you don't have to worry about it ever getting loose. What it does is when opening and shutting it, it kind of tightens on itself. So I don't know, eventually it might get so tight that I have to loosen this up or back it off. But it's not that tight yet and I like it. I like it when it's nice and tight. So pull down the trigger, shut it, and then you'll hit another trigger mark where it will lock up again so you don't close it on your hands. And then you push it down again and keep your hands clear. And then it's closed up. And it comes with a pouch that it goes in. And this is a really small unit for the kind of size wood that you can cut. Like if you're up in the northern woods and you're going to have a man-sized fire next to a lean-to, this is the most compact saw you can bring that's going to be able to cut that size of wood that you're going to need for that kind of a log fire. 
in my opinion. I mean, I've done it with a bow saw a lot too, but now that I have this, I would take this and a Laplander probably with my axe most of the time if I'm gonna, in the winter and I'm gonna have a fire, especially if I'm hauling a sled or I'm in a snowmobile or something. If I'm in a snowmobile or something, I'm gonna take the bow saw in this because the bow saw, what, what this isn't good at is if you have firewood that's like wrist thick, it doesn't cut that really good. There's no comfortable way to get onto a piece of wood that good with something this aggressive. It just wants to flip it around and, and rip it all up and tear it all up. So when you're doing stuff that is, you know, even leg size, like leg or wrist size or, or smaller, you have to have the bow saw. Or you have to do it with a backhoe Laplander, which takes a long time for something like that. So so this saw with the backhoe, backhoe bow saw, 30 inch bow saw, these two together, they can do anything together. Like you can do a lot of work in the woods with these and you can cut a lot of firewood with this. Uh, you'd be able to build a really killer shelter, probably just short of a cabin with these two pieces right here. You know, if you really went beast mode. So, yeah, Katana 650, Katana Boy 650, I like it. I recommend it. And if you guys want to check it out, go check it out over on CanadianPreparedness.com. Uncle Dave with DC's Adventures. I'll see you guys on the next video. Now that I've been cutting the grass behind the greenhouse, Bun Bun loves it so much. Like it, it, all the clovers are growing up now. And all this stuff that Bun loves. Bun Bun. Snowshoe hair. Kind of skittish right now. Bun! There's this silky katana boy, 650, got from Canadian Prepper. Just cut through that like nothing. This is, um, and a dead elm tree. Most of the elms on my property are dead and dry and they burn really hot. <sighs> Had a breath a little bit, but I got to uh I got to just knock that with the axe and it will be free and then I'll pull it through this crotch here and cut it into stove-sized pieces. But that saw breezed through that, so I think that's about the perfect size for this saw. Um, I'm going to try to cut this down eventually with it, this big tree. But I think for speed and for efficiency, that size, which is probably like six inches around, is probably about perfect. And I would say it's almost as quick as a chainsaw. I mean, if you have a really sharp chainsaw, uh, that'll probably be about half the time, but definitely a lot less effort. But I mean, I don't know. You can probably cut almost as much firewood in close to as much time with this if you are doing six inch trees. But either way, I gotta add wood to the fire so I'm not using that wood pile. Try to keep that wood pile as long as we can. So I'm just gonna be out here cutting every day. Well, there's all the wood I've put together the last two days with the Katana Boy 650 and that uh, splitting axe right there. Still got a couple more pieces to chop up. There's the rest of that dry tree we were trying to cut down. You know, we, we cut those trees down at the beginning of spring. The first trees we took down with that Katana Boy. And then we left this big one standing because it was going to fall on the road. I was going to wait until I had a chainsaw, but I ended up cutting it down with the 650 earlier this week. And my neighbor helped me drag it up here with his tractor. It's a nice piece of dry elm that burns really hot. So all the dry stuff I'm going to process and stack on the porch. And that's for starting fires. And this stuff is semi-dry. 
hopefully by the time we go to use it, it will be at least half dry. But it's still got a little greenness to it. Definitely got to be on more wood in the spring next year. Because at least half of my wood I'm going to end up doing in the fall. And most of it will be dry standing. But there's some green stuff too that I'm going to end up cutting this fall. And I'll either be burning it green or maybe we won't end up having to use it. But I'm going to cut it anyways just to make sure I have as much as I can get. Might even buy a load of wood if I find someone around here who has a load for a good deal. Um, it'd be nice to have an extra couple cords just in case. Uh, just cutting wood. That uh, katana boy has really done a good job. I mean, I have pretty close to three cords all cut up. All done up. So, that's pretty good. Still need about a cord and a half to go, which I think I'll be able to get to before it starts snowing really bad. But just chopping, cutting, sawing, chopping, all and out of the woods. Fall though, nice time of the year to be doing it. Perfect time to be out here. So beautiful. Look at that tree. See that red? Yeah. It's beginning, it's really dry, it was a drought year, so it's not changing like it did last year. Last year we had a really fast, like crazy change. Um, since we're so far north, if there isn't enough water, a lot of the leaves will die before they change. So we'll see, this tree is all green next to the cabin still. Every, all, the, all the trees right here at the cabin are pretty much green still, so we'll see how they turn over the next two weeks. I'll just be standing here. Making power and cutting firewood. All the resources I need right here. Well, just putting the katana boy away. And cutting up some stuff. I'm trying not to do too much cutting today. My arms are killing me from yesterday. But I'm at the point where I'm... I cleaned up everything and now I'm hauling more logs out of the wood again. Which, uh, I'll spend like two or three days hauling logs out of the woods and then I'll spend two or three days chopping them up and I'm gonna get to this dry one too probably tomorrow I'm gonna let my arms rest for a day I pulled that saw all day yesterday got another full tear going which is pretty sweet each time I get a tear it's pretty much two weeks of firewood so I made about two weeks of firewood just yesterday which is pretty nice. I mean, not yesterday alone. Yesterday alone, I cut it up and split it. But it was a lot of work getting it all out here to begin with. But still going to process this dry wood down. And this all the dry wood that comes from this log here, we're going to stack on the porch on the other side. Um, other side of that one. And we'll leave it stacked on the edges there. And then snow won't be able to blow in onto the porch. And I'll have some wood there. I might find some sort of like cover too for it. I'm thinking some sort of like small tarp. I don't know how I'd where I'd find a tarp that small, but I'm gonna try to find something for both sides so it'll stay dry. Yeah, so just cutting wood. September. Year has gone by so quick. It's been a crazy year. Still is a crazy year. The next couple months leading up to the election is just crazy. It's so crazy. I can't believe America is this crazy right now, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm just holding in there out here. This is a good year to be out here, though. This is a perfect year because I don't really have to deal with any of the craziness that's going on. I'm just able to hang out out here and... My only mission now is to cut firewood now that the gardening's all done for the year. I just gotta cut lots of firewood and save my money. Yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. Get it set up on some bigger wood after I charge this camera.